Hi, in this video, I'm going to be going through for loops. First, I'm going to start with code that has if statements in it, talk about that a little bit, review some if statement things, and then get into how to code a for loop. In this code, I'm going to be assuming that my user is playing a game, and I'm going to be asking them for each round what the score was, and then give them the final score for the game. So to get started, how many rounds are you playing this game? So if my user says five, I'm gonna tell them this program only works for two or three rounds. So we're already first seeing a huge limitation of this program I've developed. But now let's go ahead and try it for two or three. So running my code, two rounds, score, and the other score, adding them up and it's giving a final score. This works for two or three rounds. So again, it's a very limited code, um, but it at least works somewhat. There's one little change I could do here first to begin with, is I could see that score one and score two are repeating for both scenarios. So I can actually put this outside of my if statement, that way I don't have to repeat that same line of code. And I can delete this from my other part of my if statement. So a lot of times when we're working with if statements, there's times where we think there's two different scenarios. I have to do different things in each one, but sometimes we accidentally repeat multiple lines of code in every different scenario when really it could just be after the if statement or before the if statement, depending on the context. So now this will work for two or three rounds as well, because both times I want to ask them about the first and second round and only the third time is there something different. So if there's three rounds, I have round three question. So again, my code works very limited, only works for two or three rounds. Really, I would ideally like this to work for any number of rounds. Again, I'm repeating code. And instead of having this repetition nested in if statements with every different round, having a different scenario, a different part of if, if statement, I can use a for loop. So right here, I'm going to start my for loop. So for however many rounds there are, I'm going to do each round as round. The reason I'm not using lowercase round is because that's actually a rounding function. So I don't want to overwrite the rounding function, even though I'm not going to be using it. I still want to leave that rounding function alone and not interact with it by having the same variable name, the same as a function name. So I'm going to start at round one, and then I'm going to increase by one round every time. So again, starting one, increasing by one, round one, round two, round three, round four, round five. I want to stop at whatever round the user inputs. So my ending value is going to be user input. Whenever I'm coding a for loop, I'm going to have four main components. So in addition to this for end, I'm going to have my control variable and I'm going to set it equal to a start value, a increment or an update, and then a final value. So where does that for loop stop? So again, it starts at the first value, colon, updates by the second value, and then stops at the final value. I could do something similar here. Um, if I want to start at the last round and go to the first round, I could do the opposite. So I could say rounds, and instead of counting by one, I have to count backwards, so negative one. To one. So that would be the exact same number of iterations, but it'd be going through them backwards counting down. So if there's three rounds, what's the score in round three, two, one to the end? I'm going to leave this the way I first had it with starting at one and then going up to however many rounds my user specifies. So here I have my input for my user score that round. So I'm going to call this score round instead, and because if I have score one, score two, score three, that idea, that concept of how to collect that data is breaking down. So I can't do that anymore. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all of this. And I just have that user input for those rounds. Again, my code is now going to work for everything. So I'm going to get rid of this for now. And I'm going to comment this out before I get going just to show you where we're at right now. So right now, if I say I'm playing three rounds, my user is going to ask me, my user is going to tell me their scores. And let's say five for the last one. Now, if you look at my workspace, you can see that score round is only equal to the most recent input that I provided. 
Another error we can see is it keeps saying round one every time. We want that to change. So if I want to tell my user a different round, I can either take this whole thing and just have this here and then display that information in an fprintf, or I could have a count before my user input and just have it say round one, round two, and then each one say, what is your score? I'm going to continue it this way. So round is going to be increasing every time I go through the for loop. So the first time it'll be one, then two, all the way up to however many rounds my user inputs. And instead of one here, I want to put the whole number associated with my variable round. So we're a little bit closer here. So I'm going to go ahead and play it. So two rounds, the first round and the second round. So we see that round is changing here, but I still have that same problem of I only know the most recent value. So look at my workspace. I only know the most recent input from them. So I need another component called a running total where I'm going to each time add the score that they've provided me to the previous score. So if I go ahead and run it this way, I'm going to get an error. Um, and let's see the error together. So first round score 15. Now it tells me score requires a toolbox. Um, what's really happening is score must be a function to begin with. So I can always say exists, which is a function in MATLAB to check and see if some type of variable exists. And then it tells me it's in some other toolbox. So let's do score with a capital S to see the error that I would like you to see. I changed all of those just by hitting shift enter. That's a nice little shortcut you can have. So three rounds, doesn't really matter. I'm gonna get an error right here. Now I'm getting the error I was hoping to see. So unrecognized variable um, score. So it doesn't know what score is. So the first time I'm going through this for loop, I get here and it says score isn't a variable, it's not known. So remember, we always have to give our variables a value before we use them. So to start out, before they start playing the game, most of the time the score is going to be starting at zero for this kind of context. Sometimes you might be starting at different values for different contexts. But in this case, we're gonna be starting out at zero because anytime you're playing a game with rounds and you're scoring points, most of the time you're gonna start at zero and then add to that, which is what we will do now. So now if we say we're playing three rounds, it's gonna ask round one, let's just say five, and then we'll say nine, two. And you'll notice it doesn't say anything here, but I do see my score of 16 here. So if I want to display my information in my user, I need to bring my fprintf back in. So now that I have my fprintf added back in, let's run this again. So five rounds. And then it gives me my final score. So now I have cut down on the amount of code that I have. And more importantly, I have made my code work for more scenarios. So instead of only working for two or three rounds, how I had it previously, it works for a lot more rounds. And this is one of the benefits of using for loops is we have a lot more options.